Folks, we discussed in the previous example uh, different blood types and the antigens and antibodies that go along with them and basically a geological and a racial breakdown of the blood topping of A, B, O, and A, B. And we mentioned in the previous video that we also have these positives or negatives that can come along with a blood type. And I told you that in another video we will talk about that and we will go through and we will describe this in maybe a little bit more detail. This positive and this negative relates to another protein that we call the RH factor, a capital R and a lower case H. The RH factor, RH actually stands for rhesus, RH, there you go, E-S-U-S. -S. And rhesus is representing the rhesus monkey. Rhesus monkeys are very similar to us in a number of different ways. And in a research laboratory that allows animal testing, you will very often see rhesus monkeys that are present. They study them, they do blood work on them, a whole number of different tests go on with rhesus monkeys. And what we discovered is that rhesus, like in the previous video with the gorillas and the chimpanzees and the baboons, rhesus has another protein. And this protein is somewhat specific. And your red blood cells could also have this rhesus protein that the rhesus monkey has. Huh. So basically what we're saying is that if you have a red blood cell that is stamped as A, then there is a chance that that is the only type of protein that's going to define your red blood cell. But there's also a chance that your red blood cell could also carry with it another protein, and that protein is rhesus. If your blood cells carry the RH factor, if it does, then we label that with a positive. If your red blood cell does not carry the rhesus, then of course we label that with a negative. Current statistics show that 85% of the population, 85% by far and large a majority, carry the rhesus protein. Okay, so 8 in 10 people in our classroom will test positive for the rhesus factor. 2 in 10 are outliers, and you all are weird. Because you don't have the rhesus factor. You have a negative instead. And people have been very confused with this term of rhesus. No one really knows why that negatives even exist. Hmm. So what I'm getting ready to do right now is kind of verge on the line of science and a little bit of alien belief, maybe a little bit of mythology, all wrapped up into one. So we're talking about this rhesus factor. And here he is, a little rhesus, not a Reese cup. And this has always perplexed people for many, many number of years. Some have just accepted it. Some have said that it's just a mutation. That's why we have negatives. And evolution has taken place, and things have just changed. Others, they go off in a completely different path. What do I mean by this? Uh, let's say that I'm a mother and let's say that I have the positive form of blood. And in my belly, 
is a growing baby. And that baby is also positive with the rhesus factor. The mother would look at the baby, the, the mother's body, would regard the baby as A-OK. Yeah, not a problem at all. No big issue. If the mother was positive for rhesus, and let's say that the baby did not have the rhesus on it at all, then the mother's body necessarily wouldn't kill it. You know, there's a lot of things that doesn't have the rhesus factor that comes into your system. Your body's okay with that. So if you're positive, there's no big deal here. If a positive mother has a baby, a growing fetus, that is turning out to be positive or negative for rhesus, the mother's body will not recognize it as a foreign object, and it will not try to kill it. Okay, so what's the big deal here? Well, let's pretend for a minute that the mother was not positive but negative. She did not have the rhesus factor. And now she's still pregnant. And this one kind of makes sense, right? If you don't have the rhesus factor and your baby does not have the rhesus factor, then everything is a-okay in that scenario. Not a big deal. But if the mother is negative a negative bloodline, and she has a baby that is positive, the mother's body will regard that fetus as a foreign invader, and it will kill it. It's kind of strange, right? Here we have a mother that is giving basically life to a brand new human being. And due to genetics of that baby, we are looking at the proteins on the red blood cell and the mother's negative bloodline will look at the baby's positive bloodline. They both could be A's. It doesn't matter. They both could be B's. It doesn't matter. They both could be O's. It doesn't matter. But the presence or absence of the rhesus factor could send the mother's body into overdrive mode and kill the growing baby that's on the inside of her. 85% of people test positive for this blood. That means a small amount are turning out to be negative. If the mother's negative and the baby's negative, we're okay. That's maybe why some people are negative today, right? We also said that if the mother is positive and the baby's positive, that's fine. If the mother's positive and the baby's negative, then that's fine too. There's other things that don't have that RH factor on them. So this is another way that those people could be born. But the body is a very finicky thing. So over a course of time, people have scratched their head and they said, listen, the majority of the population is positive. Majority is positive. So how are we ending up with these negatives? If the majority of people are positive right here, then it looks like, yeah, both sets could be born without a problem, positive and negative both. But if that was the case, wouldn't we just have a 50-50 split in the beginning? And then if we had 50% positive and 50% negative, either one of these are okay. 
the negative babies would eventually grow up and become negative mothers. And those negative mothers could only give rise to negative babies. And then the process repeats itself because it kills the positives. So why do we have such a high percentage of positive RH protein? When in fact, if RH positive mothers are giving birth at the same rates, 50-50, just to make it easy, and those negatives are coming around and growing up, they only can make negative babies. And those negative babies will grow up, and they can only make negative babies. And they'll grow up, and they can only make negative babies. And the process repeats itself over and over and over in this horrible cycle. It doesn't it look like this would be flipped. Why do we have such a small population of negatives that are out there when almost everyone else is positive? Well, there's a couple of theories. And I'll get into those theories in just a little bit. But I want to give you some characteristics of these negatives. They're kind of special. 15% of the population, give or take a little bit, are RH negative. And RH negative people tend to have the following things in common. Again, if we had to stereotype it, group it together, this is what we would see. Number one, they have a higher than average IQ. They're a little bit clever. They're a little bit smarter compared to the average population that's out there. Well, I don't know about you, but being negative sounds pretty good right now. Number two, they have very low body temperatures. That means these people get hot very quickly. You know, if you put them basically into a home and you crank down the air conditioner, the colder it is, the better they love it. But just the slot warmth, they're going to be able to tell that degree difference. They don't like very hot atmospheres or hot temperatures in rooms. They prefer it cold. Well, I normally run a little bit lower than most people. I prefer my bedroom to be closed doors, blankets stuffed under the cracks of the door, you know, the air fully on, as cold as I can get it, so I can put three or four blankets on top of me. That's just how I like the temperature of my room. Number three, RH negative people tend to have a higher blood pressure than the average person. You know, the average blood pressure is 120 over 80. That is what they would classify as good. But actually, if you're RH negative, you are expected to run higher than the average person. Very few times have I ever had a 120 over 80. And I think that you're understanding where I'm getting to now. I am a negative bloodline. I'm RH negative. And my normal blood pressure runs about 140 over 90. But that's the way it's always been. I've never been lower. Even on blood pressure medication, it might tick it down one or two notches, but my body will only go to about 140 over 90. Very few times have I been 120 over 80 as the perfect blood pressure that's out there. Next in line, what other traits do these RH negative people have, like myself? Well, statistics have shown that they are typically redheaded. Ah, I can put a check mark on that one too. Red or reddish hair, gingers, those are a very large part of your RH negative population. 
Mm. What else can we say about RH negative people? Next is that they are very sensitive to light. I'm not really talking about sunburn. I'm talking about eyes and vision. And if you've ever noticed, when you've came into my office or you've came into the parlor room, I like to keep it dim. The fluorescent lights in the rooms bother me quite a bit. They give me headaches very quickly if I'm not able to get out of there or if I'm not able to take an aspirin or something. The fluorescent lights bother me. So I don't like to stay in those rooms very long. Very sensitive to fluorescent lights especially. The brighter the light, though, the more it makes my eyes hurt. I can't really stand it like a normal person can. I would much prefer a very dark, cold room than I would a summer hot day. But we have some sensitivity to light. Next, these people also show statistics-wise and under studies an elevated intuition. That means they just normally kind of trust their gut. They almost can sense when something's getting ready to happen. They almost can call the moves before the moves actually take place. In other words, they're almost one step ahead of the gang because they know something's up. This elevated intuition. You ever get that gut feeling that tells you not to do something? Well, imagine that amplified. And that amplification is typically seen in RH negative populations. The next thing that these groups of people typically report is that they are very sensitive to psychic phenomenon. Uh, that basically means I'm not talking about reading your future here, all right? That just basically means that they are somewhat, in their reports, more sensitive to spirituality and maybe another realm in a way. One of those things where you wake up in the middle of the night and you feel like something's wrong and then you realize the next day, uh, well, maybe someone got into a car accident, or maybe someone went to the hospital. Or you might have had a dream, and that dream in your dream, uh, you might have said, hey, your sister's kind of sick, or your mom and dad, maybe something was going on with them in your dream, and you wake up the next day and you realize they're kind of feeling bad, and they sure enough did go to the doctor that day before you even knew about it, before they knew about it maybe. They often report these types of cases all of the time. More sensitivity to ghosts, more sensitivity to spirits. They feel more uneasy in rooms. They feel like maybe people are watching them more. Those are the cases and those are the reports that people basically state. And I'm not going to tell you my history with that either. Next, and finally, this might be ballpark. But you probably have heard of alien abductions and people who report that they have been abducted by aliens and they have been basically dropped back off on Earth after all of the test is done and they go back and maybe someone decides to study them a little bit more. They see what they are basically talking about. The weird thing is that the majority of the alien abduction cases are done with RH negative people. Hmm. Okay, so if you believe in aliens or another population of people out in the whole entire universe, they are targeting 15% of the population. And that 15% of the population carries with them RH negative. And anywhere between 80 to 85% of the alien abduction cases 
are within that small 15% of the population. Kind of strange. Kind of weird. What do they want? What do they hope to find? Is there a connection there between the two? These are the things that blend science with everything else. There might not be a connection here at all. But there also could be a connection. If I go down through this list, I am O minus. I have a negative bloodline, no RH. My mother did not have RH. She was negative as well. And I can go through here and check off a lot of these things as I go down. Now, have I ever been an alien abducted? I don't think so. I hope not. But some of this stuff kind of makes sense to me. And if you're negative, maybe you can't check off all the boxes, but maybe you can check off quite a few of them. And where did the negatives come from? That's what's going to be discussed in the next video. So stay tuned. I'm going to kind of go off on a limb, and I'm going to kind of show you and let them tell you why they believe what they believe on how RH-negative people were created.